Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I figured today would be a nice day to show you the police car. Uh, it's February, so it's been done for quite a while, and I've never shown you the entire vehicle. You've seen it, you've seen me playing with it, but you've never seen it, so let me show it off to you. So the car is a 1969 Plymouth. This started as a satellite, so it was high price class, but now it's a nothing. It's a Belvedere, so. I do have the Belvedere and Lums that go there, but I haven't put them on yet. Don't want to drill into it, really. But uh, it was a really, really nice car when I got it. Solid frame. Quarters were a little busted, but replaced them. And so here we are now. So I got the car and had it shipped from Pennsylvania to here, Connecticut, which was an ordeal in itself, but it wasn't too big of a deal. Like I said, extremely solid. The guy I got it from technically was the uh, second owner. It had been to a couple of dealerships previously, but nothing too exciting. Each door we have uh, custom graphics that I made, uh, except for the city seal in the middle. The rest I made at home. Uh, they're very close reproductions of the originals. Uh, they varied too. And uh, same on the can lights. Uh, these are reproductions that I made uh, of the uh, original, which were Trio T2 warning lights. Uh, the bases are made by a gentleman in California who uh, he makes them and sells them, so I bought a set from him. And the siren speaker is a Federal Signal CP25. Uh, I think it's like 50 watt. It's very loud, I'll show you. And uh, that, that's an original. I have another one that I bought two of them from a gentleman in Massachusetts who also has a Adam 12 car and uh, I made one good one out of them basically and it's not perfect the whole car is not perfect um, but it's a very nice driver I mean it since it's been done it has gotten a couple dings and dents that I'm gonna have to fix um, but it's no big deal I like to drive the cars I don't want to be scared to park it in the parking lot you know and you couldn't have a police car without the uh, Steelys with the Plymouth Division hubcaps now these are 14s, uh, the real police cars had 15s, and I have three of the four plus one for the spare of those, so hopefully I can do that and put some bias plies on it soon. So if we go inside, the interior is uh, lacking. I started in the rear, I have the material to put the uh, police package interior in uh, but I only got one done before the uh, Rhode Island police car show and then never uh, I, I you know the seats in I don't want to take the seat out again for now it's almost show season the door panels are incorrect for a Belvedere um, but they are tan so I kept them that way tan is the right color for a police car uh, at least the Los Angeles Police Department I think uh, California Highway Patrol used black but it does not matter. Most everything works very well. Uh, we have a standard speedometer, not a certified one, but you know, headlights, three speed wipers, high price class, uh, it's a torque flight transmission, obviously. Now we have almost all of the uh, communication equipment correct. It's a uh, federal signal, PA20A2D. So PA20A just means it's the uh, has high low instead of alert, and uh, 2D is 1969. 2E is the one you hear normally in like Blues Brothers, with that crazy in between siren. That's a federal signal. That's this, but a 2E, and that's putting the knob between these two, and uh, you know it all works. Uh, you know comes on. This is a uh, Motorola Motrek. Um, it is not the right one for the LAPD. It is so ridiculously hard to find the right one uh, because basically only the LAPD used it. Instead of having F1, 2, 3, and 4, which are frequencies, obviously, uh, it would be F1, simul, F2, 3, 4. And uh, that was simultaneous. I can't remember exactly why they used it. I think it was to monitor uh, two channels at once. Uh, now, LAPD, until like the 1990s, never mounted spotlights like you're normally familiar with in the pillars they had a rubber ducky spotlight as you would call it 
and it plugs into the cigarette lighter, uh, which is here. And this is your light and siren control switch. Now mine's a little different because I wanted to be able to use just the ambers, which was a real option, but it only started in about 1971. Uh, but if you flick the switch up, we get out of the vehicle, you see that the two reds stay solid. Uh, that's California law that at least one of the reds has to stay solid. So LA went with two. And in the rear we have amber, which is a California thing mostly. And ours wigwag back and forth. Real ones uh, each had an independent flasher so that one if, if one broke, it was still legal to be the police car because it has one flashing still. And uh, if you noticed, this one says siren and horn. Uh, the deal is that, well, let me show you this first. Here's your microphone. It's connected to the siren. Federal Signal sold this, which is an interconnecting cable between the radio and it plugs into a uh, Synth Jones connector on the back so that when you have it on radio, manual, wheel yelp, or high low, and you take the microphone, you can press the button, and you can transmit on the radio. That's what the red light is. If you put it on PA, it's PA. And radio would broadcast the radio through the siren speaker. Now, when you put this into manual mode, with this switch down, and there's also a foot switch that Federal Signal had. It's the horn. With the switch up, this is going to be loud. It's the siren. So, as you can see, like I said, not perfect, but under the hood, uh, I did just break the line. I wanted to paint a lot of it, but I wasn't pulling the engine to paint the car. So, we have a 318 with 80,000 or so miles on it. Not bad, doesn't run awesome, doesn't run terrible. Um, we've got a big red wire from the alternator to the battery. It's a shunt wire because on these Plymouths, all the alternator voltage goes through that amp meter on the dashboard. And so on every fleet and heavy duty police package vehicle, they had a six gauge red wire that ran through the firewall separately of the bulkhead connector, which is that. That bulkhead connector is a weak point on all of these B bodies and basically every Chrysler. So they would run it through to the amp meter and back to the battery. Um, I could have done that, but the shunt wire was good enough basically for what I was doing. Um, and it runs well, start it up. Gotta slam it down. There's one of those boo-boos on the hood. The alternator fell out while I was driving and it sent the bolt right, right through. But if we start it up, right up I have a kit a dual exhaust kit on it and uh, it's nice I put it in myself I'm gonna have to adjust it a little in the future because it's a little wonky just because it's made for headers and I don't have headers but overall it sounds very nice in my opinion overall I really really enjoy this car it gets a lot of waves a lot of smiles a lot of thumbs up it's it's like driving a Volkswagen driving this thing because you know you see road runners you see gtx's but you never see old cop cars unless you're you know looking for old cop cars so it's pretty cool to be out on the road and just thumbs up and smiles and waves so hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video just wanted to show it off to you guys because you've never really seen an in-depth tour of it i have a few more things i want to do to it i have to make a uh, little hot sheet desk for the uh, dashboard it's like a little steel desk with the uh, paper daily list of stolen vehicles in the area. So they would have that there and they could write notes and tickets and all sorts. But do that and it'll be basically done. So after this little outro, I'm going to throw in a few clips I think I have uh, from the Rhode Island State Police Car Show. If there's any clips, they'll be after this. But until the next time, guys, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Woo!